Discover how this chakra is key to your ascension and why it isn't the third eye. Referred to as Satan's seat in the Book of Revelations, the Church of Pergamos is represented by our solar plexus. But how? Well, you know how you make a conscious effort to observe your patterns, impulses, and emotional reactions, but when it comes to acting on a decision, you end up hitting a downward spiral? Now, if you've worked through guilt and low-frequency emotions in your lower chakras, which I discussed in the previous root and sacral chakra videos on my page, then you can bounce back pretty quickly. But if you repress every emotion about every impulsive decision you make, then it can feel like game over and starting again from level one. The solar plexus chakra is where we apply actions to our choices, but if our ego is driving us, it can be self-destructive. The solar plexus chakra really is the test to determine whether we are ready for awakening our energy up to the higher chakras or if we have some more baggage to clear out in the lower chakras. The spiritual awakening isn't just about reaching vast spiritual frequencies to escape the human experience, it's about bringing us closer to understanding our unique sense of self. Once we understand where our desires are coming from and the values and healthy expectations we set around them, then we can take action. The solar plexus is the fortification of this. We strengthen this chakra by asserting our will based on the boundaries we set that meet the needs of our own mental, physical, and emotional health. Let's use an example most adults can relate to, hookups. Now I don't believe there is anything wrong with it, it comes down to personal preference. However, what if you meet up with someone and they don't meet the expectations and boundaries you have set for yourself and you continue along with them anyway just to satisfy your ego? Basically you end up settling, and then afterwards you have this icky feeling about it, you feel guilty, shame, even a sense of betrayal. You then start to think that casual hookups are bad, and you need to fight to overcome these sinful actions. This is where things start to go down the wrong road. See, the issue here isn't the casual sex as long as it's safe and consensual. You may just be a person who is vibrating on a more expansive frequency, or the person you met with wasn't a vibrational, even physical match, or they had different expectations. You felt something in your gut telling you this, but you ignored it to satisfy what the Bible refers to as animal nature, aka the ego. This is why Revelations chapter 2 verses 14 through 15 asks, why do you indulge the Balaam crowd, sabotaging Israel by throwing unholy parties, and the Nicolaitans who do the same thing? I don't believe sex in itself is sinful, but if it is strictly an egoic pursuit, and without any awareness of the spiritual and energy exchange taking place, then there is no intention for where the energy flows, leaving you feeling scattered. I can't stress enough how it would cause no good to become a zealot over this. Just have awareness and intention for how and who you want to share your energy with, and if your gut says otherwise, trust it. This could be why Jesus in Revelations 2.17 says, listen to the wind words. Wind words meaning your intuition. When we go against our gut, it's a betrayal of the solar plexus. If you're familiar with esoteric or mystic arts, you'll know that air is symbolic for intellect. So it's no coincidence that that solar plexus is the energy center that holds our intellect, emotional intelligence, and gut feelings, as the solar plexus is located in the center of the stomach. But if this is the seat of Satan, how can it be the house of the intellect? The shadow of Satan's throne. Jesus states in Revelations 2.13, this is because the shadow aspect of the solar plexus is the ego aka Satan being in the driver's seat of our impulses, actions, and decisions. If your solar plexus is under or overactive you may experience anger, emotional reactivity, limiting beliefs, and a lack of confidence. But Christ promises an end to the egoic practices with his sword-sharp words. And here's how. In tarot, swords are symbolic for air. And if you're familiar with esoteric meanings, air is representative of intellect. Now let's go back to Christ's advice to listen to the wind words, the spirit blowing through the churches. Now if the seven churches are representative of the seven chakras, and air is representative for intellect, and Christ is whispering through us, then it's plausible to interpret this as divine intelligence and intuition. The Christ consciousness speaking through our chakras as our intuition and the promised gift that is mentioned in Revelations. Revelations 2.17 states the secret manna that Christ will give to us in his letter to the Church of Pergamum. This is the promise of Christ within us, Christ consciousness, our kundalini continuing to flow as it overcomes the ego's limiting beliefs in the solar plexus into a state of purity. 
moving forward in the world with confidence, stability and personal power as we flow the kundalini energy up to the heart chakra. A lot of people may disagree or even agree with this, but I leave you with this question. What brings you peace and does it move you away from feelings of shame? Comment below.